I wish the uh, super committee, the six Republicans and six Democrats that are now three from the House, three from the Senate of each party, I wish them well. I also uh, wish them much more transparency. We've heard nothing out of this committee. They've been meeting on a daily basis. I think they owe it to the public to be more transparent and start to tell people what's under consideration, what's not under consideration. They are supposed to report on November 18th. And that uh, uh, in, the, in, our, in legislative life today might as well be November 18th because phase just fly away uh, from you in that uh, in that uh, in that process. And so I think there's uh, there's a point here which uh, clearly additional transparency is, is necessary uh, for this process, especially if we're going to ask people to have confidence in it and support it if in fact it works and it's balanced and it, it, it addresses the, uh, the long-term deficit. At the same time. At the same time, it's critical that this country understand the need uh, to, to, to do what we can to help create jobs. And there's a number of things that we can we can do on that on that front. The Senate, I believe, is going to take a vote uh, relatively quickly, maybe this week, on a proposal to try to help out local governments, to help out school districts. We've had massive layoffs at the state, local level, and school district level. Uh, we've seen where uh, the last few months. Private employment has started to creep up, but the gains get wiped out because of what happens at the uh, uh, at the local level. Uh, and uh, clearly, uh, with respect to schools, some of them were able to use what was the stimulus that we provided before to, to reduce the number of layoffs that they had in 2010 and 2011. But that money's gone, and we really ought not to be in the, the first uh, generation uh, to sacrifice our children because of an economic downturn. We need those children uh, as we emerge from this uh, economic downturn, as we emerge in the next iteration of a globalized economy, we need those children to be performing at a very high level. And the idea that we would now start cutting school days and school and the school year and, and, and uh, uh, raising the, the class sizes uh, to fairly extreme levels uh, in many areas, in many areas of different parts of the country, uh, that to me ought to, uh, uh, ought to be avoided. And uh, so that's uh, that's what we're working on. But there's uh, let me. What I'd like to do is I'd like to just run through a series of, of issues. But I think clearly uh, the, the jobs and, and, and trying to put the government in shape for an economic Whoa. recovery and to to uh, uh, I'll get no shortage of issues. Believe me, I do that. Uh, uh, is, is really foremost, and, and as we're reminded here, uh, we have 14 million people who are unemployed. When you uh, two million, two and a half million, uh, that are over 55 years of old. We see now discrimination in the workplace. Uh, we, we've now started seeing people. If you're unemployed, you can't apply for these jobs. Who the hell do they think needs a job? Uh, but that's uh, that's happening in the workplace, and obviously, uh, it's, it's very troublesome. But uh, clearly, uh, that this effort has to uh, has to be made. I think I think President Obama had it right. Uh, when, the, when he first came to Congress, right after his election, and he, uh, uh, he made the point uh, that uh, even then, with, with, with the economy turning down, that what America had to do is it had to reinvest in itself. It had to make an investment for the next generation of, uh, of ec economic growth, and it, it had to make an investment in a modern healthcare system, in a modern education system, in a modern energy system, a clean energy, a green energy system for multiple reasons and an investment in infrastructure, which was not only just the physical capital of the, of the United States, but also the human capital of the United States in terms of basic research and development that takes place in, in, the, in, the, uh, in our great research universities across this country, in our elementary secondary education program, and in the physical uh, 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 infrastructure of this country, which is our highways, our bridges, our transit systems, our port systems, our air, airline systems, uh, in terms of air traffic control and modernizing airports, all of which generate a significant amount of, uh, of jobs across uh, across the, uh, uh, entire uh, entire industries. Very often, people want to suggest that highway jobs is just about construction workers. No, it's about engineers and architects and, and scientists and environmentalists and, and all of the rest of the people that make up the uh, the decisions that uh, that take place. And uh, that's uh, that's really. Uh, what is, what is uh, I think, necessary uh, for us to do. Uh, I was very supportive of, of the President's energy policy, the, uh, the cap and trade. I was actually a person who believed in the carbon tax, 
uh, but that uh, apparently wasn't going anywhere in Congress at that time, although there's many converts to a carbon tax now after looking at the, the problems with, uh, uh, with cap and trade. But clearly, uh, investment will be spurred again if at some point we decide what the price of carbon is and then let the various forms of carbon go out and compete against, uh, against one another. What, what you now have is, is a system uh, where you're continuing to renew commitments to some of the dirtiest forms of the most expensive forms of energy in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the country. I obviously was a believer that we had to modernize the healthcare system uh, with, the, with my work on the, uh, on the passage of, uh, of the National Healthcare uh, Bill, the Accountable Care Act. Uh, I believe that that's gonna serve, uh, serve the country very well. I know people now wanna blame that if, there, if anything increases in healthcare, it's because of the law. But I want you to go back to before, before the act and while we're waiting for the act to go in, into effect in 2014, the healthcare costs have been going up for many instances, about 16% a year, much faster than any other segment, uh, any, large, any large segment of the, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the economy. And benefits have obviously been felt already by families because their children can be insured. Women don't, are no longer a pre-existing condition uh, by the fact that they're women. They can get access to medical care and treatment, uh, as can men uh, who have ailments that they didn't know about before they got there. Uh, and so that's, that's, uh, that's changing. Uh, seniors now get a free, uh, free checkup in the sense that, it's, it's, that you don't have to have a co-payment uh, for that. Kaiser's reporting uh, that that's, uh, that's working out very well in the sense that people are coming in and again, they're capturing problems before they become critical, before they become emergencies, before they become very, very, uh, very expensive. Uh, we now see small businesses dramatically, uh, given their track record, uh, and the cost of and the difficulty for them to add employees to their health care systems because of the tax credits. We now see small businesses adding their employees uh, to health care. Again, not my figures, but the uh, Edna Insurance, uh, uh, the insurance commissioner out of Missouri, uh, our own uh, insur uh, insurance uh, in, in California, commissioner reporting these, these facts. And I think that will make for a better, uh, better health care system. Uh, uh, no questions of, uh, uh, but all of this harkens back, and, and I think today, uh, clearly we are reminded of this, uh, of, of, of the problems that we have and why we're talking about dealing with the deficit in the fashion that we had. Uh, and it's, you know, it's sort of a matter of history, and, and it's pretty clear on its face uh, that we made some very bad judgments uh, over, the last, uh, over the last decade. Uh, uh, President Clinton made a very tough decision about trying to get the deficit under control, putting in a plan that I tried to get the Congress to accept in 1983. They got around to it in 19, uh, 1993, and that was the pay-as-you-go system. Simply said, if you think it's of national interest, if you think it's a, a matter of great importance to this country, then be prepared to pay for it. Go out and ask the public to pay for it. If you think it's more valuable than X or Y, then cut X or Y to make room to pay for it. It's sort of what American families have to do one way or another. We're not all as good at it as we are because we have credit cards out there, but the fact of the matter is you need these trade-offs. And Bill Clinton passed that, and he passed, again, he passed a series of cuts, pretty substantial cuts, one of which was welfare reform, and the other was he passed revenues, a balanced package, as President Obama is talking about now, 15 years later. And, and the fact is that the, balance, the budget ended up being balanced, I'm not a fan of Alan Greenspan, but, uh, but he came to the Congress and said, we have so much money in surplus that we will probably never have to sell and maybe we should get rid of the 30-year bond because we have, we have almost $5 trillion in surplus. As we know, 10 years later, we had $8 trillion uh, in, in debt. And, and, uh, uh, and there's where we are. How did that happen? Because uh, we went, went and started two wars weren't prepared to ask the public uh, to pay for it. Again, if they were so important and so critical, uh, that should have been done. We did the uh, prescription drug benefit that we, uh, was great to hand out, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't paid for. I think it's been helpful for the rest of that. Somehow you've got to figure out how to, uh, how to pay for it, and you had a, a tax cut uh, of very substantial proportions, massive proportions, uh, that, uh, that wasn't paid for. And uh, so we're, we're in that uh, box where we have to come back and, and realign it uh, for, the, for, the, for the economic security of the nation and of, of, of families uh, that live here and hopefully for the growth and 
and absolutely necessary for the growth of our, uh, of, of our economy. Uh, I mentioned the, the, uh, the war. Uh, many of us are working very hard here. It is the 10th anniversary of Afghanistan uh, to make sure that we have uh, Afghanistan, that we leave Iraq, uh, that we don't uh, continue to try to nose our way in with the remainder force, then we'll attract additional forces because they can't operate on their own. Uh, 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 these were both uh, huge mistakes in terms of the extended, uh, extended effort. And, uh, and they, uh, uh, they should be stopped. And we're worried about what we uh, see now, what's going on in, uh, with the next additionary force uh, going to Africa. Uh, it was reprehensible as, as the, the Lord's Revolutionary Army with, uh, uh, is, again, I think these ought to be, you know, there ought to be some stop to think about the policy and the implications of, uh, uh, of all of that. Hopefully, and, and, and the President has been fairly strong on, on the dates that have been set to get out of Iraq and, and, uh, and Afghanistan, and those will hold, although there's a lot of effort by the military to convince the Karzai government, which I wouldn't want to be in bed with at any time, uh, to convince them to ask us to stay. And they're trying to then now convince uh, 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 of the, uh, of the Iranian, of the uh, Iraqi government to convince us to stay. Because we can't stay because we said we'd leave, but if you gave us an invitation, we'd come back. Uh, I, don't hope, I don't think so, and I certainly hope that that's not the, uh, uh, that that's not the, uh, the, the, the situation. Uh, again, one of the issues that's come to the forefront is after the financial scandals of, uh, of, uh, of Wall Street, uh, uh, credit is seized up for small businesses and mid-sized businesses. A very difficult time uh, because of the, the, the loss of access to credit. We gave a lot of money to small regional banks, relatively small regional banks compared to the big money center banks. Uh, they took the money. Uh, they paid off the money that they borrowed from the federal government. They just forgot to make any credit available to, uh, to small businesses. Uh, somehow that has, to be, uh, that has to be sorted out. We can go into that. In, in more detail, again, uh, I think there's some additional help that can be had that's been very successful through the Small Business Administration. I think some of the things the President is proposing in terms of uh, accelerated depreciation or allowing businesses to expense their immediate capital investments uh, and payroll holiday perhaps for hiring new people and, 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 a, and a payroll deduction for existing, uh, existing people uh, should also, would also hopefully, but it's still a question uh, you know, they want to they bang on uncertainty in the United States and all this, that there's so much uncertainty because Obama can't do this and he won't do this and he won't do that and he won't do this and he's trying to have, imagine he's trying to have, make sure that the financial regulation that we passed in light of the, of the financial scandals on Wall Street, did it actually pass and go, I mean, did it actually go into effect? They're insulted that he would push to have this enforcement go into, uh, uh, in, into place. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that's gonna have to happen. We still have to try to determine how are we going to get credit uh, to small businesses, and 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 how are we going to get growth in the uh, uh, in the economy? But it's really not uncertainty. When you look at the Wall Street Journal uh, uh, survey of small businesses, and you look at the McClatchy uh, news chain surveys of small businesses and a number of foundations that work with small businesses on the issues of innovation and and, and creating new businesses, uh, the number one comment from small businesses: I don't have enough customers. I don't have enough customers. I want to hire, we're doing relatively well, we think we've survived the worst, but we don't have enough customers. And uh, that brings us to a huge, huge problem that's sitting in the middle of the room that I think the administration completely failed to, uh, to properly address, and that is the issue of foreclosures. Uh, the idea that you can have this economy uh, take off in some big fashion when you have 14 million homes uh, underwater in this country in one fashion or another, some 60 days or more, uh, and uh, that, that you think you're going to have people be customers uh, for Christmas or for back to school. Benito, again, thank you so much to the parents, the kids, uh, uh, to the organization. I don't think this is good to, uh, for doing it. Uh, uh, when, when people are in fear of losing their home or a member of their families in fear of losing their home, uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is not going to be an inducement to the, uh, to the economy growing. Uh, I've had huge arguments uh, with band of 20 or 30 members of, of Congress uh, to try to get the administration to understand the full seriousness of this. 
Uh, they kept saying their program was going to work, they're going to tweak it, it's going to work, they're going to tweak it, it's going to work, they're going to tweak it, it's where it just simply hasn't happened, and families have crashed to the ground. And uh, 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 most, most of what's happening now are people who've been unemployed for a very long time, and they're running out of uh, uh, unemployment in some instances, they have medical events take over, all of the things that happen to you when you're living in, in an economically precarious uh, uh, fashion. And I, I, but I still think we have to go forward. Uh, there's still a great deal that needs to be done. I would invite uh, all of you to, uh, to go to Google and to Google onto the uh, 15 most uh, impacted communities by foreclosure. I don't know what the magic words on Google, but that'll get you there. And, uh, and look at the, uh, the maps and the cities that are in, on, on place. And uh, pick a place you might not think this would be a huge problem. Uh, a place like Boise, Idaho. It looks like contagion. The red dots of the houses that are underwater in Boise, Idaho, affect every neighborhood multiple times across the city, the old city, the suburban city, the new development, all across the board. Then you can, of course, go to Las Vegas, or you can go to Stockton, California, or you can go to, uh, you know, you don't have to travel far. But it gives you a sense of what's taking place and you think about the health of those communities and those, and those families. I think clearly we need to write down principle so that people will stay in their homes, they'll continue to make their payments. And you can just begin with the people who are continuing to make their payments, but they've lost so much value in their homes, your worry is that they'll walk away. And they look at this and they say, what am I, a fool for being here? No, we have to, we have to, uh, uh, we have to sort that out. I was uh, a boy that I don't usually get a lot of support from Martin Feldstein, uh, of, uh, President, one of President Reagan's economic advisors, but he wrote in the New York Times uh, Thursday of last week, uh, this is critical, and you have to write down principle. You cannot do this uh, if you don't do that, but it's critical to the economic recovery that that, uh, that that take place. So what you see here is there's a lot of moving parts in this economy, and of course we have, we have uh, what you saw today, uh, is the Germans said, well, it's gonna take us another week to get a plan in place for Greece, and, and the stock market you know, just plummeted a couple, a couple of hundred points. So this is not isolated to America. We're not insulated from what happens in other countries. They're not insulated from, from us. But I do believe that the sooner that we can send a signal of confidence with, with deficit reduction, with, the, with, the, with the, the balanced program that the president is talking about, I hope the Congress is, is up to it. It's tough choices, difficult choices, but I think they need to be made. I think that helps in Europe. I think that helps in other parts. And uh, it's not just the, the Greeks. Uh, it, it's flashing over onto the Brazilians that were you know, they were going, going, the economy was going uh, for a lot of good reasons for, for Brazil. And we see, uh, we see a lot of questions now being raised about uh, are these Chinese businesses really real? Are they phony? Or do they belong to the army? Do they belong to the government? Uh, are they getting bank loans that they're not deserved to? And a lot of confidence and, and, and concerns are being expressed about China, which is another piece of that. So this is really a time that tries, uh, uh, tries uh, the spirit of America. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I don't think that we have uh, uh, many options but to try and reignite uh, the American dream. And I'm a big fan of, uh, of, uh, of small businesses. I'm a big fan of innovation, and I'm a big fan of basic research. Uh, I think uh, you look over the, the arc of, of history, and it's really basic fundamental research, which many companies aren't, aren't in a position to do. A lot, of, a lot of smart, talented people are in a position, but they can't get funding to do that. Uh, uh, you can do it jointly. Uh, historically in this country has been done at the, at, the, at the big research universities. And, uh, and from that comes the innovation, from the innovation comes the jobs. And I think that all has to be renewed in this, uh, in this country. And part of that is done by driving, uh, driving the market so that people will go out and compete for their share of that, of that market. I'm sure I've missed a number of things, but this is, uh, this is uh, your, uh, uh, your meeting, so we'll, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, if I've slided some topic or something, it's not intentionally, but there's some point which I have to stop talking here. I could go through, uh, I have a long list. I haven't even touched on, on the, my concerns about elementary, secondary education, but we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, yes. Oh, I got a mic? Okay, or I can repeat the question however you wanna do it.
mr miller i'm john fitzgerald i'm actually running in the primary as a democrat against you i ran last time also yes and the question i do have is yes we're mark my words we are entering a major decline with the economy it is not a recession it is definitely a depression and anybody that knows of elizabeth anybody that knows of a lady named elizabeth warren is speaking about just this issue in order to ask you a question i have to give you a little background on what she is stating that's that's fine but it's pertinent you know what we need if, if we may wait if we may please i'm a die-hard progressive democrat and the reason i am running i voted for this man my entire life the reason i'm running is because certain issues are not being addressed and i think debate is good and we need debate with other Democrats, with Democrats, to get issues on the table that are pertinent to this community. Okay, okay. the question I do have, Mr. Miller. Would you be willing? No. Well, let me just, just, just ask the question. But we, I mean, let's stop. For, let, let's stop. Let's stop for one second here. Shut me down. Shut me up. Sit me down. Shut me up. Sit me down. Shut me up. Let that man talk. Just one second. Just one second. Let him ask a question, not debate. You know, I, uh, I, 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 could I just say something? Uh, in all of the years I've, hold, I've held town hall meetings, I've had raucous ones, and I've had one day just me and the janitor from the elementary school showed up. Nobody else came. He got an hour of my undivided attention. He was happier than hell. Uh, but the only thing I've ever asked, I, I don't rule out questions, I don't, you know, all that. The only thing I ask is, is try to treat people with a little bit of courtesy. That's all I've ever asked in my town hall meetings. And I think when you have a, when you have a limited amount of time uh, and people have a lot of questions, you have to form your questions, but you're welcome to ask me this question, but I'd ask others to, to, it's a matter of courtesy. Okay. That's all this. Thank you, know. you, Mr. Miller. Okay, would you be willing to debate me and get the issues out on the table so the people your constituents. I would probably wouldn't have time here. Our questions are so long, but we'll see. Yeah, that's not a long question. Okay. <laughs> would you be willing to debate? We'll see how the campaign okay. comes out. And secondly, we'll very quickly. The very I don't quickly. even know where the district is. Would you be yeah. willing to audit the Federal Reserve? And would you Maybe. support Dennis Kucinich's bill to actually reform our monetary system and actually give it back to the Treasury in order to actually allow us to know where our money is going? and let Congress okay. have okay, oversight. You your question. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, as I said, I was not a big fan of, of Alan Greenspan, and I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily, I, I think, Jim Bernanke got handed the cards you got handed. Uh, I'm not convinced that they've all been played well, but that's me. Uh, but I, you know, uh, when I see the political atmosphere in Washington today, uh, I think I'm happy at the margins that the Federal Reserve continues to be independent. And I know there's many people who can't stand it. I've railed against it a good portion of my public life. Uh, but I think that, that when I see the, 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 the serious, serious uh, politicalization of the process in, in Washington, I, I don't think it's such a bad idea to have an independent agency. Nothing is beyond the reach of Congress should they decide to do it. But you get you get some margins for judgments to be made for people to, to come on to the to various regional boards around the country to make their best determinations about the direction of the economy, what might be helpful, what might be harmful, and I think it's important to have some distance between that and the White House, some distance between that and the Congress, because if they just become a tool of you know, an administration or a Congress, I don't think we're we're, we're well served. You know, the qu question of auditing it is sort of, a, sort of a Trojan horse for getting rid of them. They believe that they're going to have some great discovery uh, that, that somehow. So that's, that's part of the school of abolishing the Fed. That, 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 you know, it's, it's it's privately owned bank. You know what? Historically in this country has been done at the, at, the, at the big research universities. And, uh, and from that comes the innovation. From the innovation comes the jobs. And I think that all has to be renewed in this, uh, in this country. Part of that is done by driving, uh, driving the market so that people will go out and compete for their share of that, of that market. I'm sure I've missed a number of things, but this is, uh, this is uh, your, uh, uh, your meeting, so we'll, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, if I've slided some topic or something, it's not intentionally, 
but there's some point which I have to stop talking here. I could go through, uh, uh, I have a long list, I haven't even touched on, on the, my concerns about elementary and secondary education, but we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, yes? Oh, I got a mic? Okay, or I can repeat the question however you want to do it. Mr. Miller, I'm yes. John Fitzgerald. I'm actually running in the primary as a Democrat against you. I ran last time also. Yes. And the question I do have is, yes, we're, mark my words, we are entering a major decline with the economy, and it is not a recession. It is definitely a depression. And anybody that knows of Elizabeth, anybody that knows of a lady named Elizabeth Warren is speaking about just this issue. In order to ask you a question, I have to give you a little background on what she is stating. That's, that's fine, but it's pertinent. You know, what we need, if, if we may, wait, if we may, please. I'm a diehard progressive Democrat, and the reason I am running, I voted for this man my entire life. The reason I am running is because certain issues are not being addressed, and I think debate is good. And we need debate with other Democrats, with Democrats, to get issues on the table that are pertinent to this community. Okay, okay the question I do have, Mr. Miller, A question, not debate. You know, I, uh, I, 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 could I just say something? Uh, in all of the years I've, hold, I've held town hall meetings, I've had raucous ones, and I've had one, one day just me and the janitor from the elementary school showed up, nobody else came. He got an hour of my undivided attention, he was happier than hell. Uh, but the only thing I've ever asked, I, I don't rule out questions, I don't, you know, all that. The only thing I ask is, is try to treat people with a little bit of courtesy. That's all I've ever asked in my town hall meetings. Yeah. And I think when you have a, when you have a limited amount of time uh, and people have a lot of questions, you have to form your questions, but you're welcome to ask me this question, but I'd ask others to, to, it's a matter of courtesy. Okay. That's all it is. Thank you, know. you, Mr. Miller. Okay, would you be willing to debate me and get the issues out on the table so the people, your constituents- I would probably wouldn't have time, your questions are so long, but we'll see. Yeah, that's not a long question, okay. <laughs> Would you be willing to debate? We'll see how the campaign okay. comes out. And secondly, we'll very quickly, the campaign. Very I don't quickly. even know where the district is. Would you be willing to audit the Federal Reserve? And would you support Dennis Kucinich's bill to actually reform our monetary system and actually give it back to the Treasury in order to actually allow us to know where our money is going and let Congress have okay, oversight? You your question. Okay. I, you know, I, uh, as I said, I was not a big fan of, of Alan Greenspan, and I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily. I, I think Jim Bernanke got handed the cards he got handed. Uh, I, not convinced that they've all been played well, but that's me. Uh, but I, you know, uh, when I see the political atmosphere in Washington today, uh, I think I'm happy at the margins that the Federal Reserve can. And I know there's many people who can't stand it. I've railed against it a good portion of my public life. Uh, but I think that, that when I see the, 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 the serious, serious uh, politicalization of the process in, in Washington, I, I don't think it's such a bad idea to have an independent agency. Nothing is beyond the reach of Congress should they decide to do it. But you get, you get some margins for judgments to be made, for people to, to come on to the, the various regional boards around the country to make their best determinations about the direction of the economy, what might be helpful, what might be harmful. And I think it's important to have some distance between that and the White House, some distance between that and the Congress, because if they just become a tool of you know, an administration or a Congress, I don't think we're, we're, we're well served. You know, the qu question of auditing it is sort of, a, sort of a Trojan horse for getting rid of them. They believe that they're gonna have some great discovery uh, that, that somehow, so that's that's part of the school of abolishing the Fed. It's a privately owned bank. You know what? I've given my answer for tonight. Yes, yes. 
to the time. That's the other thing I asked. Okay. Uh, last week, I was heartened to uh, hear. Last we week, I was heartened to hear the Democrats get up in the House and expose the farce that was going on when they were starting to meet. And uh, there was nothing but discussion about an abortion bill or a bill that would uh, limit women's right care when they're hemorrhaging in the hospital. And uh, Jackie Spear made an outstanding speech, but many of your of your compadres did. And I think that that's very effective. And I would like to see the Democrats doing that time and time again, every time they bring up abortion or they bring up these side issues, the cultural issues, and they're not dealing with jobs. Every single time, you gotta, you gotta expose it. You gotta bring it to the public and let them see it. Let them put it in, put it in front of a mirror so everybody knows what the Republicans are doing. There, that was a bill that they passed uh, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I've been arguing that uh, a long time and participating in that uh, in that effort. I don't think there's any more gripping problem. It's not that there aren't other important issues. I'm not denigrating issues or people's beliefs on the issue. But the most gripping problem for this country at this particular time is the question of revitalizing economic growth and getting people back to work. And uh, it's crushing families. It's crushing families, it's crushing communities, and it's crushing, certainly, uh, having an adverse impact on small, on small businesses. So, uh, I don't appreciate that tactic. That I just, no, well, that, we've, we've tried, you know, they, they control the rules of debate. Yeah. And so the question is, what, what, you know, what, what, what can you say and how can you get, a, can you get an amendment offered to, to, to make that point, or what we call a motion to recommit to make, uh, to make that point. Uh, and this one clearly, uh, you know, they wanted to suggest that they were just doing what we'd already done in the health care bill. Then why were you taking up time to do what we'd already done in the health care bill? Uh, this was obviously a much more extreme uh, restriction on a, on a woman's right to choose. In the back. I have a job question. Uh, I understand. Wait, I wait a second. Yes, one second. Just I understand that there's a panel that's involved in certain Wait, but just, wait, just hold on so people can hear you. Yeah, I understand that you're involved in scandals. I don't know if you're not. But when I read well, about it, it's it, true or not, not, then it won't make any difference what the answer is. So. Well, it does make, okay, let's just say uh, it does make a difference. If, what you get, if you get your way, the jobs that you create are going to Mexico. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, no! Oh, those, those, as I understand it, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't pretend to know that much about it, but as I understand it, uh, you're talking about the, the sun power, the, yeah, the, yes. the solar contract that they have with PG&E and, and with the other energy company, NRG. Uh, that those, they, they have said that those, those, the panels for those, that job for that solar farm would be created in the United States. They today manufacture jobs in Richmond at the old Ford building from, from World War II. They manufacture in Milpitas. And I think they're talking about some of this being done in San Diego and uh, uh, and in, in Milpitas for that for that particular contract for the loan guarantee uh, that was uh, that was made. I don't know. I, you're asking me about. I wrote a letter on behalf of the loan guarantee for Sun Power. They have now said. They, they, pardon? Yes, I, and I'm telling you what they what they have said. They may they investigate. They may be creating jobs elsewhere. They may be creating some jobs. It's not unusual any longer for companies to do work here and to do work overseas. I'm not happy with it, but the fact of the matter is they make, they make their determination. Let's repeal NAFTA. Well, I didn't vote for it the first time, so you know, I'm way ahead of you there. there you go. Yeah, so fine, thank you. Yes. I was talking to the uh, Contra Costa Council of Business Organization uh, across the county, and I was saying that I was actually hopeful that we may, in fact, be able to reach something along the lines that President Obama has, has proposed in terms of, of a large deficit reduction package that is balanced. 
And I said, one of the reasons I'm vocal, I said, this isn't the, is that they say that very often peace comes from exhaustion. And we've been, we've had this back and forth, uh, it's an entirely different Congress uh, uh, and, 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 uh, than I worked in most of my, uh, my life. Uh, used to be, uh, you went into a room to get an agreement. You know, the, the, the Senate Education Committee and the House Education Committee had different versions of how they thought uh, a problem should be solved, and you went in and you hammered it out, you did it publicly, you, you did it in open meetings. That doesn't happen anymore. They don't have those meetings anymore. Uh, but now, I think, in, in, many, in many instances, rather than struggling over how do, you, how do you have an economic recovery, how do you create jobs, how do you reduce the deficit, how do you get a, a health care plan in place that American families can afford and businesses can afford? Now it's, it's about a struggle, essentially, who's going to control Congress? It's a struggle over, over, over power. And th there's, there's, you know, there's, there's enough to go around, but, my, but my, well, that's what my point is that I have never worked in an atmosphere where the leadership of one party said that they wanted the president of the other party to fail and that their number one agenda was that effort, that he must fail, not have a second term. I was never a fan. I was never, I was never a great fan of George Bush's when he was running or when he, when he was president. I never rooted for his failure because I guess I grew up in a different time. I thought if the president of the United States failed, then America is somehow diminished. I didn't like what he was doing. I didn't like what he was, like what he was doing. But I never, never rooted for his failure. I mean, I gave him, I, you know, I, I worked, I didn't give him, I worked very hard on, his, on one of his first successes, which was No Child Left Behind. Uh, uh, you know, and I, I got roasted for it. I felt it was the right thing to do. I felt that we had hidden from parents and people, school districts the performance of low-income and minority children that they were being put in a closet and everybody said, gee, this education system is doing great. Well, it wasn't. So I don't know. You know, you know, you know, excuse me, I gave you my opinion. You gave me the question, I gave you my opinion, and there's a lot of hands going up here. Yes, right here. Oh, oh I know you got to run with that mic. <laughs> I have a loud voice. No, no, that's all right. Not loud enough in this crowd. <laughs> uh, one of the questions I have is why do we not have an effective voice anywhere that's explaining to the American people the difference between long-term and short-term deficit? If they don't understand what the difference is between long-term and short-term, we have to have a plan for the long-term but we do have to have funds to get us out of this. But if nobody understands it, then it sounds really good to say no to everything. So who's going to be the voice that puts that in lay language? Well, it, you know, I think, I think the, the, the president has, has, has made it pretty clear that, uh, that he has, uh, uh, he has his, his balance package that he's hoping the country will support. And in fact, now it's almost two to one in favor of what the president is proposing across the country, including revenues supported across the economic levels in this country, from the richest to the poorest, almost two to one. People are starting to see this come into focus. But at the same time, he has a $450 billion jobs program that is paid for over that 10-year period. But recognizing that you've got to ignite the economy to move, that there's a loss of confidence, and that there's many areas where we can go to, to have, that, have that happen, that's his jobs bill. It's been explained numerous times. You know, people will pick it up from where they, how they see it, how they hear it, and, and you know, I can't control that. I, that's not my job. But I think he's, that's why he's traveling the country now, because the more he explains it, it appears, the more people are going, uh-huh, okay, that makes sense. You know, it's very clear he's prepared to, to do some, some deficit spending at this moment that most economists, right and left, have suggested is necessary, but then to make sure that within this 10-year window, it's paid for at the end of that time. Because you hope, what you're hoping, is that economic growth will come and help you pay for that if you're successful. Are you asking for a question? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Person with a microphone? <laughs> I, I wonder um, Not my meeting. <laughs> about the uh, super committee. It, do you think it's possible? Again, that's the advice of 
great, great many economists across the board of how to do it. If you just if you're just going to come out of the super committee and say we're going to do nothing but a trillion dollars in cuts, I'd say hold on, folks, because this right. is going to get really bumpy. Right. Because that's not that that's not going to work. Yes, gentlemen, you have a shirt on. Or, of course, you have a shirt. On. <laughs> I don't say wait and see what the audience is interested in. I think the, the uh, Occupy movement is an incredibly important, uh, a, a incredibly important event, uh, uh, not, not just in this country, but obviously it's resonating uh, elsewhere. I think the uh, pundits, the talking heads on the Sunday shows and the nightly shows where they chew on a bone for about eight hours, uh, they say, why isn't anybody tuning in? But anyway, um, uh, I think they're befuddled by it. They insist that they have a leader, because what they'd like to do, just like they do in political campaigns, you get the leader, then you rip them down. Uh, I think these people are, uh, you know, that they're showing a level of sophistication, that uh, the problems are so great that this isn't about one of them, other than the moral issue about economic disparities that has accelerated in this country, uh, and, and, and the moral issue of the unfairness of that acceleration of economic disparity, I'd say those are pretty good grounds to be standing on right now. Yeah. It's not a mystery. It's not a, it's not a mystery in this, uh, uh, in this, in this, in this country. This, this is fundamental. This, this is about, this is, I know, you know, I was watching somebody, uh, was it today or yesterday? I'm on East Coast time, so I'm watching things at 3 o'clock in the morning that, you know, my, my wife like. Uh, arguing that it's really not about the 99%, it's really probably more about the 85%. I thought, get a life. <laughs> get a life. You know, we, you're talking about, you're talking about, uh, 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 you know, 10% of the people, 15% of the people, I mean, people go back and forth, occupying about 85% of the wealth in the country. You know, I cut my teeth in Latin America back in the 80s. And everybody in America was writing about how these governments couldn't hold on to a democracy if you had this kind of disparity. We have greater disparity than some of those countries at this, at this time. And now, uh, uh, this, this is a real problem when you think about democracy. Democracy is very complicated and very difficult to hold on to. You know, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, especially one as, as vibrant as, as this. And so, uh, but I think, I think the Occupy movement is speaking for millions of people who really believe that this deck has been stacked. Well, let me tell you, when you loot the country in the name of derivatives or, 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 or whatever, they, whatever the sophistication is, and when banks lose their fiduciary, sense of fiduciary responsibility, when my wife and I wanted to buy a house in 1972, uh, uh, I went to the Bank of California. And the banker looked at the house, he looked at me and what I, my income, and he said, George, this is too much house for you. He was taking care of his depositors, and thankfully he was taking care of me. He says, you'll have to find something else. When did the banks give up their fiduciary responsibility? When did they give it up? Had nothing to do. This is this is about personal responsibility. This had nothing. This has. This is. Oh, you guys, suck it up. Let's just go back. Let's just go back. When did when did banks decide no proof of proof of ability to repay the loan? But this was a good. This was a good business plan. Why did they do that? Because the fees. The fees and the commissions were worth more than the solid loan. They went for the solid loan. The fees and the commissions. So, you know. Why are we in Libya? Why are we in Uganda? Why aren't you talking about those wars? I just talked about them a little earlier. No, you didn't. Ah, yes, I did. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So why are we going to illegal wars? Why are we going to 
Why don't you wait to take your turn? Well, so are these people. Where is it? Where? You want to talk about the problems in Congress? the question. This is not my meeting. I was invited to this meeting to come and talk with you, and I was told that people would select questions at random, and that's what I've been trying to do. Many of you I don't know. I don't know what your agenda is or your names or whatever the rest. Many of you I do know. Uh, I just find it rather interesting if I can do a little editorial response and I'm going to answer your question. What was the question? Libya and Obama's Uganda. I found this very uh, educational because you're representative of the same people who say, why can't Congress act like adults? say that probably very little will be accomplished by pointing fingers and shouting at one another. And I think it's critically important that we enable political leaders, and they should enable themselves along with that, to make some of these very difficult decisions that are in fact going to have to be made uh, uh, to, help, to, help this, uh, to help this country. And, and uh, again, I don't know when you decide because you weren't called upon for a question, you got to overrule the rest of the room. Is that the decision you made? Some people say don't reward. Some people say don't reward bad behavior. But I guess apparently you will not let the meeting go on until your questions be. No, I'm just. Are you kidding her? Get on with this. Thank you. 
I'm not baiting her. No, I'm getting. I'm getting. He's getting ready to answer the question. As I said in my opening remarks, that I was very much against against the, the war. Apparently not. As I said in my in my opening remarks. Sir, we came to hear him. They're, they're starting the process over again. Okay. Um, I said that that I obviously was very uh, hard over on the idea that we had to withdraw from Iraq and for Afghanistan and not support those wars. Matter of disclosure, I supported the first effort right after 9/11 to go get the perpetrators of 9/11 with the extended extended operations. I've never I've never supported. I said at the same one I'm starting to be very concerned about new efforts, and I mentioned Africa. I did not mention Uganda. I mentioned Africa. But we apparently are in the process of sending or have sent. I did not mention Libya uh, or Africa. Uh, but you know, Libya, uh, the way that issue was uh, was presented to the uh, to the Congress uh, and the way it appeared on the ground, uh, I don't think that we had uh, much much alternative than to support this very limited approach uh, that the president tried to impose upon himself and on this country and turn this over to, uh, to NATO and uh, to try to make this international because you're talk you were talk you're talking today in a very volatile part of the world uh, and you had uh, uh, the Gaddafi government uh, announcing that it was prepared to simply kill its own citizens and it had set up a whole regime to, to do that uh, uh, in, in, that, in that effort, and uh, it wasn't as quick as the, uh, as the president uh, said it might be. I think they were talking about being out in a couple of weeks. Of course, it's, uh, it's July. Month. July. Why are we? Why are we? Why are we, why are we why? It wasn't lying. It's like Rocky Marciano said. You know, the great heavyweight fighter. He says everybody has a plan until they get hit. <laughs> you know, we had a plan. And I was I was over there a little a couple of weeks after that, and, and and reviewing our support system. NATO had no ability to to refuel this aircraft because they hadn't made the investment. Right. NATO had no ability to do intelligence, uh, air surveillance, to find out where the enemy was, where the snipers were, where the rockets were, where the where the ammunition dumps were, because they hadn't made the investment. So we had to fly almost 70 percent of the support systems, not in country the support systems to refuel the aircraft. Otherwise, they would, you know, they'd be flying from Germany down to Libya. They could be over target for about 10 minutes and have to go home. And, and so we, the president, tried to say we're here in a, in a support system with intelligence, with surveillance, uh, some overflights, and in fact, some, some uh, there was actual, you know, actual fire against, against uh, uh, target. I understand that, I understand that. I saw, and I had made it very clear that I, because Congress never wants to take the responsibility. I said at the beginning, the president lost me when he didn't come to Congress for the for the permission on, on Libya. Okay. I understand, you just did, you just did, you just got the answer. Okay. And, and the point is that... The, 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 let's, let's, let, you know, let's, let's, let's not get into egging. On. You know, I, I, so far, I've had a great day today. I started out with a group of students in Richmond in a charter school who are just ripping away at, uh, at academic achievement uh, from some of the most difficult neighborhoods uh, in, that, uh, in, that, in West County, in the city, and these kids were just sterling. I went then to a, an effort where Comcast has, has put on a, a program at a middle school to give those students access that could, families couldn't afford it to the internet. Ten, a very limited part of the educational internet uh, and, and access to computers in their homes for them and, their, and for their families. I went to the council and a lot of people there disagreed with me by party, by ideology, what have you, and we had a discussion. And let's not destroy this because I still think we can have a discussion. But it doesn't mean that you, you get to just jump in and, and, and occupy the room. Yes. Thank you.
news, we saw that about 10,000 people marched in San Francisco on Saturday, October 15th. So with all due respect, Congressman, I love the fact that you're pro-environment and you know about, you're, you know, focusing on jobs and all that. But my question is, what have you been doing to end corporate personhood, to declare money not equivalent to free speech, which effectively renders the poor voiceless to trust us, the media conglomerates, that suppress the real news? And what are you doing to push big businesses' corporate agenda out of Congress and put the congressional agenda back firmly in the hands of the people where it belongs? Uh, and I would say that that's my public record in public life. That's what I spent most of my time battling for. And uh, the, biggest, uh, the biggest abuse of corporate personhood is now with the Supreme Court decision on campaign contributions, Citizens United. Because the idea that IBM and you are the, have the same, same ability uh, to, to persuade uh, the elections is, is so outdated, but it's very clear because no court has been good on this issue. Uh, that that's going to have to come, I guess, to a constitutional uh, amendment. But uh, you know, the legal fiction that's created around corporations has, in fact, been you know has been badly uh, abused in this uh, uh, in, in this country, either to shield uh, from liability. But I, I just would again go back and say that when you look and you you read the books, and there's been some wonderful investigative reporting on this, you're talking about individuals inside of major international corporations that made, you know, that made a decision to do business without any personal, social, or economic sense of responsibility. That, that's, a fun, that's a personal decision. Those corporations are, in fact, driven by people. And they just decided that no, no rules applied, and away they went, and they drove this country into the most, most, most serious ditch in our lifetime. And, and, uh, so I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't agree with you more, and uh, uh, again that's that's where I've spent my uh, my public life. Yes. We were the only country in the world that could supply those needs and take care of them, and we prospered. And this went on for decades. We have reached the point where we have to reverse it. I'm a person who always says, let's bring the money home. How are we going to get corporations to cooperate? We have to give them an incentive. I'd like to have just put this out to you for your concern. Love you guys. Bye-bye. 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 What we do with the corporations. Just a moment. Let's get down a moment. Go visit the tables of yes. the groups yes. that need help yes. uh, for our neighbors in the, in the county that are hurting. Thank you, Thank you. You've been and, very patient. Um, I, my name is Virginia Porter, and like um, other candidates, I too ran for the congressional right. district seat. Um, as a minority, I, I, I must say I do agree with your position on the war. We are too quick to say we spread all the same. Mike is in the right place. And yeah, speak up a little bit. I said that I do uh, support your position on the war. I think black people, and uh, as a former business owner myself in the past, um, I was not allowed, and often many minorities are not allowed to independently, directly provide services to the, the population that you deem to be worthy of um, uh, our services as low income and people that have uh, a heart to get going. And that was mainly based on the on the color of my skin. So as a minority, I have to ask you, um, why should we continue to believe that the Democrats are for the, the downtrodden and the minorities? When, when we step out of our comfort zone to provide services to our own community, we don't get the support that we need. That all happened the last two years. because I was forced out of business longer than that. But I have contacted your office on many occasions, and um, it was never important to... Um, I'll have to look at that, because I'm not sure that's the accurate statement. We, one thing we do is respond. But let me... Uh, uh, what, what's the history of the Democratic Party? It's the history of the Democratic Party. Oh, well, I can tell you that I've been 
that what you have to do if you're going to really do this is you have to have a balanced package. You have to have deficit reduction from cuts that you're going to have to make or reforms and programs. Part of Richmond, I'm one of the Richmond kids and a part of the Green Screen team and the employment rate is going down and this man is doing so much to help us out and everything but we would just like you to give a word of hope out there to all those Richmond kids who are looking at you and you know looking up to you and all that kind of thing. Thank you. That's nice to thank you for being here. Tonight, the hope that we're trying to provide is, is more than just hope, but really the, the, the funding the president has put it in his job school to do accelerated training with young people, to do accelerated expansion of community colleges so that people can either go back and get their, their, their high school degree or get, get the, uh, the training. Uh, it's, a, it's the closest comprehensive resource we have in a community. Contra Costa is a bus ride away for almost everybody in West County or Dabble Valley and Central County. And uh, because people, uh, it's very clear as the economy is changing, people are going to need additional skills and additional education. And uh, the president has, has put a substantial amount of money into, into his jobs program. Uh, but we need, we need the economy to grow even beyond that immediate term. And that's why he's, 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 he's doing the jobs program so economic growth will come about and then businesses will have an opportunity to hire people they might not have hired because they're afraid of whether or not they'd have enough customers. And so, you know, uh, we're working, we're, we're trying to make jobs the number one issue in the Congress. Uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle aren't, uh, aren't very helpful right now, but I think the president, uh, by taking this campaign to the, uh, to the country about jobs, about young people who are unemployed, older people who are unemployed, people who need retraining, he's making the point and it looks like America is starting to move in this direction. So, thank well, you. We thank you so much. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Well, that's nice of you. Tyler, great to meet you. Thank you.